Hey guys, welcome back to Lost Alice. So I noticed in the last episode I had the volume just a little too high, so I lowered it for this for this episode, which is why I was just kind of debating whether I wanted to do this or not, but I've started this and I'm having fun, so let's go. So, yeah, I'll, I'll show you guys. So, I did some grinding to get these Tapjoy offers, just a bunch of, to get a bunch of free lapis so that I could get this outfit and that hair, and also a new outfit for him, so that I can raise, oh, I'll show you guys one more time. No, it's not the menu, it's my room. Huh. So yeah, you see the hearts up there? That shows... So hearts represent Kyle, where, whereas the other symbols represent everyone else. So yeah, I raised that up so high so that I can... I think it's supposed to help you get points, like, in the game. So yeah. Yeah, you sometimes need sugar points in order to continue, so I'm going to do that. Mm. <laughs> Missed it. Okay. Ooh, got all of them. We're falling up. Oh, oops, I need to grab that just a little bit more. Mm. 
Oh wait, no, I need 12. No, 10, so... What? There we go. a fun little game, but I think it's time to continue the story. Kyle Nock, Chapter 2 What do you mean by what the Hatter will have to say about it? Sid's words had me knitting my brows. I didn't understand why he would bring up Luke. I was also surprised by his suggestion that Luke would have any having anything to say about it. After taking a moment to regain my composure, I realized the absurdness of those words. I don't know what you're insinuating, but I'm free to spend my time with whomever I want, aren't I? I just met Luke and we're not particularly close, so he's in no position to dictate me. Right. He must have detected the note of frustration in my voice. He raised both hands in mock surrender. That didn't come out right. I apologize. But his lips held a mocking smile as he pressed on. He just seems to be searching for you frantically, Alice. So I thought he might lose it if he saw you two together. And that was your way of warning me? I can't claim to be noble, but I suppose so. I thought I'd show a little consideration. Hmm. The young man who called himself the March Hare might not be such a bad guy after all. His rugged features made me wary at first, but I quickly reevaluated my opinion of him. Sid, do you know why Luke is looking for me? Sid chuckled softly at my question. I have no clue. He didn't seem to want to talk about it, and I wasn't that interested, so I didn't pursue the matter. Who knows, maybe he fell in love with you at first sight? You are kind of cute. Well, thanks? His smooth delivery of those sweet words had me flustered, but I went thanked him all the same. Sid is no doubt the kind of guy that speaks his mind. That's why he's so quick to apologize earlier. Alright, I should get going. While I was pondering my thoughts about Sid, he turned his back on me and started to walk away. I'm glad I got to meet you. Let's chat some more if we get the chance. Yes, of course. Bye, Sid. Sid walked away and rounded a corner. Mitchy. Up until this point, Kyle had been silent, listening to me and Sid. Alright. Suddenly, he reached his hand out toward me. I don't want you thinking about another guy. Kyle's hands were insistent as he forced my chin upward so that he was the only thing reflected in my eyes. You haven't forgotten who you're with right now, have you? Let go of me, Kyle. No. Kyle seemed unaffected by my protests. He wore the same smile that he always did, but his voice was demanding. Not until you promise me that, from now on, you'll think of me and only me. Er... I refused to cave to Kyle's demands and stood my ground. You know, I can't make such a reckless promise. The look Kyle was giving me now held no sincerity. As if he truly wanted me all to himself or was intent on winning me. I didn't think that's how he feels. He seems to have an ulterior motive. We remained silent as we held each other's gaze. I looked into his anthesh-colored eyes in all seriousness, while Kyle maintained his gentle smile. 
A curious staring contest ensued for a while, but Kyle was the first to speak. You're right. I'm sorry, Richie. Seeing you look so concerned about the Hatter made me jealous. Jealous, I see. To what extent were Kyle's words true? For some reason, I couldn't help but doubt him. He must have sensed my apprehension. He didn't say anything, turned to smile warily, and he slowly pulled his hand away from me. You got photo, chapter two. All right. I regarded Kyle and bluntly spoke my mind. Be forewarned, Kyle. If you cause too much trouble, I'll be tempted to say, don't follow me around anymore. I see. I would have no doubt my Alice would say that. Kyle must have realized I was serious, for he shrugged his shoulders dramatically. How many times do I have to point out that I'm not yours, and I'm not Alice? Of course, his words struck a nerve. No amount of protesting is going to make a difference. It's becoming exasperating. I swallowed my argument and turned to face him again. Alright, Kyle, will you guide me through the town? As you wish, my Alice. Mm. I fell in step behind Kyle as he wasted no time showing me around this town, of which I had no recollection. <clears throat> the Forbidden Gate. Hey Kyle, what is this gate? I stopped before a towering gate that perked my interest. After talk taking a thorough tour, we headed to the outskirts of town. This is where we encountered the gate. A pale blue light shined in the middle of the door to the gate, around a hollowed keyhole. All that was visible behind the gate was lush green trees. I wondered what was beyond this gate. This area is forbidden. Why? I wanted to know what lay beyond this gate, so I kept pressing for an answer. Kyle spoke gently, as if addressing a child. Think about it. A gate with such an impossible lock. It's obvious that whatever is on the other side of this gate is extremely dangerous, isn't it? So be sure not to get too close. Don't forget. Hmm? A dangerous place, eh? I wasn't really convinced. But all I was interested in looking for was the road home. <clears throat> I can't picture my house behind a tightly locked gate, so... This meant I had no business here. Alright, Kyle. Next, can you show me what's over there? I thought it best not to let my curiosity get the better of me and to concentrate on finding the road home. Kyle led me all over the place until finally the sun went down. Mitchy, you still don't remember the road home? No. I couldn't remember, even remember something that might serve as a clue. I was filled with frustration and exhaustion from walking. We did, so my reply was weak. Kyle took my disappointment and smiled gently as he made a suggestion. Are you tired? We should rest for the night. If you don't know where your house is, you can always stay at mine. What? Your house? Why are you so surprised? Mm. I took a moment to formulate my reply. Mm, let's see. I think this will be the best choice. Well, I suppose... I thought about it for a while before nodding grudgingly. I have nowhere else to go, so I think I'll take you up on your offer. Kyle's smile broadened. I'm glad you find that agreeable. I'm looking forward to spending the night with you. Let's make it passionate. I'm tempted to keep you up until morning. I think I've changed my mind. Wait, why? What do you mean, why? In any case, I'd rather sleep outside than go to your house. My reply was perfectly straightforward until I heard a howling sound coming from the forest. The sound was savage, 
definitely not that of a harmless little creature. Yeah, okay. Making progress. Yes. There's a dangerous beast that attacks humans around here. Kyle smiled as if he could read my mind. So, what will it be? You can come to my house with dinner and a warm bed await. But if you're so vehemently opposed to the idea, I really can't force you. Mm. Mm. What did you say, Michi? Uh, you know, Michi, there's such thing as a proper way to ask someone for something. But I glared at Kyle as he stood there smirking at me. Yes, of course. Please let me spend the night. Haha, <laughs> that's what you should have said in the first place. Kyle laughed in amusement. I regarded Kyle with deep resentment. I suppose I have no choice, since there's no way I can sleep in a forest with wild animals. Of course, I suspected Kyle was also dangerous, but I decided I couldn't cut off my nose to spite my face. Encountering a wild beast is a matter of life and death. Kyle might be untrustworthy, but at least he didn't want to kill me. If he did, he would have already done so by now. Anyway, he didn't seem like the violent type. So, I decided to take my chances with Kyle rather than the beasts, and I walked to the forest with him. That's my house. The house seemed to be at one with the trees and gave off a quaint vibe. The light spilling out from the window was soft and gentle. The atmosphere was welcoming. What a lovely house. I didn't let my guard down completely, but I let him lead me inside. Kyle's house lacked a feeling of being lived in. The comfy room was a bit too clean and devoid of personality. The fireplace looked to be broken in, which ne meant nights in the forest were likely cold. <laughs> Incidentally, Kyle smiled at me as I took in the room. You must be hungry by now. Why don't we have dinner? Premium root coming up. Now's the time to challenge a checkpoint. Okay. So, so my best choice would be this one. Yes. Okay. find out what I can do with ribbons, because I still haven't figured that out yet. Yes. Since you're letting me stay at your place for tonight, I'll cook. It's not much, but it's my way of saying thank you. Your homemade cooking? Hmm, what a pleasant surprise. If you're going to put your heart into cooking for me, my Alice Michi, I'll happily devour whatever you make for me. Um, Kyle? Yes? You don't think I can cook, do you? That's not it at all. I'm just saying I value the effort over the food itself. So you know, the results don't matter. There's no pressure, okay? Mm. Wait and see, alright Kyle? I borrowed my unbelievably cute apron that Kyle had ready for me. I immediately set about cooking. Many of vegetables I have never seen before, but I did recall how to cook. All should be well. As I stood in the kitchen, Kyle discreetly came up to me. You look really good in that apron, Mitchie. It's really cute. 
I mean you, of course, not the apron. Kyle rested his chin on my shoulder, almost touching my cheek, and whispered sweetly, Oh, but I think I might like it even more if you weren't wearing anything. Kyle, stop distract me while I'm cooking with your ridiculous remark. Kyle's fingers reached out to untie the ribbon of the apron. If my hands slip, I'll be cutting off your finger instead of the vegetables. It was really dangerous to play with someone while cooking. I sensed he was smiling wearily at my threat, but he did take a step back. Alas, enjoy. I cooked a pot of stew with those mysterious vegetables and smoked meat simmered in wine and herbs. The salad was garnished with white clumps of cheese and thinly sliced mushrooms. The bread in the house was completely dried out, but there was some olive oil, so I spread the oil and some lemon onto the bread and heated it. It looks delicious. You made all of this from the ingredients I had in the house? Or did you use magic? It's not magic, it's called talent. Wow, it really does look delicious. To be honest, I'm surprised. Kyle, you've spent all this time admiring only the presentation, as if you expect it to taste bad. It doesn't look delicious, it is delicious, so eat up. When I pre prodded him, he shrugged his shoulders lightly and used the wooden spoon to scoop up some stew and bring it to his mouth. Mm. How is it? Do you like it? When I sought his opinion, he sounded genuinely surprised. You're really amazing. So you like it? Of course. This tastes fabulous. Just the fact that you made it for me makes it so happy. My Alice. Kyle seemed genuinely delighted, so he closed his eyes in pleasure. <laughs> Eat a lot. The effort of cooking was well worth it, as his pleasure was infectious. Kyle's reaction was so unexpected. I'm sure the rest of the meal will be just as interesting. He closed his eyes after each bite, and I smiled as I watched him. After we finished cleaning up, smile Kyle smiled and spoke. You should rest now. This sweet dream room is back through those doors. Alright. I appreciated his dis suggestion. I was starting to feel sleepy. But considering how big the house looked from the outside and the actual size of the comfy room, I can't imagine there being a guest room, which could only mean... Kyle only has his sweet dream room in this house. As soon as I realized this, I spoke. Mm, okay, best option. Thanks, or... I think it's thanks. Thanks, Kyle. That was pretty sweet of him to offer me his bed. When I accepted his generosity, Kyle smiled cheerfully. I sat down on the only bed in the room and sighed. After all is said and done, he may be a nice guy after all. But his smile and his actions. I just can't seem to trust him. I found some very cute sleepwear laid out on the bed. The garment looked new. When I held it up against my body, I found it to be the perfect size. Yep, another reason not to trust him. There are plenty of things that raised my suspicions, but I must have been extremely exhausted from all that walking around today. As soon as I lay down on the bed, I fell into a deep slumber. Ooh. Oh, it's time for the preview. This isn't really my style, but I suppose I have no choice in the matter. Why don't we take a peek at the next page? <gasps> as soon as I realized the predicament I was in, the sleepy haze disappeared and I was wide awake. Kyle, why you- This was a turn of events I hadn't anticipated. I realized my voice was shaking with rage. Go away! Right this minute! What do you think you're doing? I would think that's obvious. Kyle's voice was still groggy from sleep. So, looks like Alice is still with the Cheshire Cat. 
The Hatter, Luke, looks determined to do everything in his power to get between Alice and the Cheshire Cat. He's normally very calm, but he seems to, well, lose his mind when it comes to Alice. I wonder what would happen if Luke were to catch Alice and the Cheshire Cat flirting. It sounds like things are getting interesting, doesn't it? And so, on the next page, the Cheshire and Cat fight over Alice. All right, yep, I'm getting good at this. Let's see, and no. All right, looks like that's chapter two, and hold on. Yeah. I am just, yeah, this one has the most hearts, so I'll stick with this one. And home. All right, well, that was fun. So yeah, I, I am definitely gonna continue this because I, I enjoy Otome games. Look, I don't know if, yeah, it says this is my first shall we date game. This is all really new to me. So maybe I'll do a voltage game next, although they don't really have that many options. Sorry, I keep, <laughs> keep pausing. I'm a little sick. But anyway, I want to thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you next time. Bye-bye.